the old Bronco has ceased to blow cold air. Uh, it loses Freon faster than I can put it in, so my only guess is it's probably had a rock fly up and hit the condenser or something to put a hole in it. But anyway, I decided to go ahead and take the easy route and just replace the entire system, almost every every single piece of it. Uh, the only thing we're not replacing are you know, the lines and the uh, evaporator core, but everything else is getting new parts. I want to add really quick that this repair will work on both Broncos and pretty much any Ford equipped in this year range with the 5.0 and the 5.8 liter. So everything I'm saying here, um, you can kind of cross platform apply it. But for those who've never even looked under here for their AC parts, I suggest you definitely get some help. But if you want to try this alone, I'll go over the basic components you're going to replace for you here in this part. Uh, it's also important to note that I have lost all my Freon. This is your first major component. It's going to cost you some money. This is called a compressor. This on the front is your clutch. This is the drive belt that drives it. And this is the uh, power supply to the clutch. So <clears throat> you're going to need someone to professionally pull the Freon out of here. Say perhaps your problem is that your compressor shelled out. Well, you'll need someone to pull that, evacuate that Freon. But anyway, around the system we go. This is your compressor. <clears throat> Inside here, you have your condenser. The, comp the condenser sits back in here. We're going to replace that. And then if you look on the back side of your compressor, you have a fitting back here that you'll need to remove a bolt right there. There's O-rings behind that. And uh, sometimes it's bad lines, you know. Uh, I don't think it's bad lines on this one, but this line goes over to the other side, and over there is where all of the magic happens for you to get the cool air into your cabin. <clears throat> you have uh, your accumulator dryer right here. You're going to replace this component here. This is your pressure sensor right here. This makes sure you actually have enough Freon in the system. And you can see mine's been rubbing on the uh, heater hose. So I'm gonna go ahead and reroute that while I have it apart. And then uh, this is your low side. This is where you're actually gonna put the Freon into the system uh, once you've evacuated it and all that good stuff. And then they did slip a daggum spring lock fitting in on you right here. So you'll have to remove this clip right here. And then you'll need a spring lock tool to come up and pop the, there's a, like a, a ring spring inside here and there's a tool you'll need to do that. And you'll see that a little bit later in the video to get this line loose because your orifice expansion valve or orifice expansion tube sits right in there. My finger points, it's right inside that tube right there. So you're gonna replace that orifice tube that sits in there. You're gonna replace the, of course, the O-rings that go in that. You're gonna go ahead and replace your accumulator dryer. And inside this box here is your evaporator core, okay? Sometimes these do go bad and cause a leak. Um, when I pull a vacuum on this, if it won't hold a vacuum, and I've replaced all these other components and uh, O-rings, then there's a good chance that thing's leaking. But most likely it's the condenser, all right? And then to take the condenser out, you have a fitting sitting here and another fitting. But anyway, we'll get into the fittings a little bit later. So I don't have all the tools necessary to do this. So it is off to the tool store I go. So Harbor Freight to the rescue as always. You can get a set of gauges, all the Freon you need, your can tap valve, and your vacuum pump for around 130 bucks. If you don't know about Harbor Freight, Harbor Freight is a tool stop for veteran, rookie, and brand new mechanics. They will save you money on tools. They did not pay me to say that. Just like that, we're back at the house. We have everything laid out. I'll go over it really quickly. You saw me pick up the gauge set. You saw me pick up the uh, vacuum pump. Also picked up some uh, quick connects and also picked up my Freon, believe it or not. The Freon is $6 per can cheaper than the parts store. Can tap. And I did have to go by the parts store and pick up some brake parts cleaner. And uh, all that together cost me a whopping, uh, yeah, $144.45, all of it. And uh, we're, we're smack in the middle of a recession and uh, the biggest inflation in history. So there you go. Not bad. Let's talk about the parts, okay? You say we've got a big box here. Of course, that is my condenser. And this little box here is where everything else is. I'll just show you really quick what I got. Uh, came with a receiver dryer, refrigerant oil, compressor, expansion valve, um, condenser, and an O-ring kit. And I want to say this thing cost me about 350 bucks. And yeah, there's all the... Comes with the pag oil, O-rings, orifice expansion tube. There is our, uh, that's gonna be our compressor and that's gonna be our line dryer. So, yeah, I've lost all my excuses, time to get busy. Now, of course, I wanna give myself more room to work and I have discovered a little lifesaver for removing these. You can, of course, use a screwdriver, but I put a 5 16 on the end of my drill or my impact. Look at that. 
makes removing these uh, hose clamps a cinch. And then this hose here just slides out your way. And now you've got free access to your compressor. Next part of this is, of course, that, well, that might be my leak right there. I see oil. Might get away with some O-rings. Anyway, uh, this bolt back here is the infamous 10 millimeter. All right. And lo and behold, I actually have my 10 millimeter. I need to go, uh, yeah, say thank you to God for that. And this is what those lines look like. There's a sensor on top and you'll want to replace, it's going to be O-rings that butt up against these, these surfaces here. So I'm going to move that up and out of my way. Now you can see the back side of the compressor. You can see where those O-rings fit right back there. I'll get you a better shot in a minute. Next, I want to remove the power supply to my clutch that we talked about earlier. So a couple ways you can do that. I'm just going to wedge a screwdriver in there and then just pull up. And that takes it off nice and easy. And we're going to go ahead and remove that and get it out of the way so we're not breaking the tab or something when we get... Uh, but we might get a little rough with this part when we're moving. I don't see us getting having to get rough with it though. And then of course we need to go ahead and remove our belt. And uh, this has a spring-loaded belt tensioner. We'll get this camera to zoom in really quick for y'all. See that right here? Now you can put a ratchet wrench on that and you see this, this got a wound up spring right, right there, right there, okay? You can put a ratchet wrench on that bolt or a wrench and you can pull tension off of that and then remove this belt. I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, now the bolt size is 15 millimeter. Y'all noticing a, a, a trend here. <clears throat> Ford put a lot of metric stuff in these trucks, okay? So I'm going to put that on there and you're going to want to turn it counterclockwise, all right? So that means you're going to put it on there and push down on the wrench like that, see? And it doesn't take a whole heck of a lot of pressure. I'm doing this with a thumb and finger. I'm trying to keep my hands out the way so y'all can see what I'm up to. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put pressure on here. Then I'm gonna reach around this other one here. I'm gonna slide the belt off, just like that. All right? And when I do, it's gonna take, <clears throat> take it loose enough where I can slip it off the alternator. All right, and I'm gonna to wanna to do that to give myself a little more slack on this other side. Let me get my wrench out the way. A little more slack on this other side to get my belt off my compressor. I don't have to completely remove it, okay? I'm just going to remove it enough to get it off my compressor on the other side. And it will practically fall off on its own. I'll show you. Now that the belt is off of the alternator, I got all the slack in the world I need. However, I will advise you, pay attention to the, the configuration. The belt goes down and under the power steering pump. And then from the power steering pump, it comes up and over the top of the water pump. And from the top of the water pump, it goes back down and around the harmonic balancer. From the harmonic balancer, back around this pulley here and up through the uh, top of your alternator and then between those two idlers. There's also a uh, belt configuration sticker on most of these so you can you can get it if you're stuck. All right, so now I got my belt out of the way. Anyone want to take a gander at what size those bolts are? Well, if you said 10 millimeter, you would be correct. I'm gonna crack these loose with my wrench first and then I'll come back with my little impact driver to get these bolts all the way out. These are pretty tight. So again, like I said, I'm gonna double wrench it. There's another mechanic trick for those of you who don't know. Is you take another wrench, put it on top of this the main wrench in the in the mouth of it right there and give you enough leverage to break these really really tight bolts loose and these bolts are tight okay this one's in a hard to get to spot so it might be a little more fun than the others but i need to let y'all see me struggle while well, you know this is real there are times in a man's life where he knows he's whooped and he needs to try something else well here's my something else that is a 3 8 drive ratcheting breaker bar and a big 6.10 millimeter. Let's see if we can break it loose with this guy. I think they're going to give. What do y'all think? They're either going to give or they're going to strip. There we go. All 
right, we got them all busted loose. Those are some long bolts, so you don't want to lose them. Probably don't have extras laying around unless you got a Ford graveyard out back. Not a bad thing to have, actually. There's the last one. All right. That compressor should pull right out. There we go. Now, I'm not throwing this compressor away because it is a good compressor. It actually was compressing, was doing what it was supposed to do. But remember I told you that I thought I saw, well, I did see oil here. Take a look. You see that? That sucker probably leaking out right there i can't prove that but anyway we've already spent the money we've already got a uh we've already got a new compressor sitting behind me and uh we got it apart so let's go ahead and put the new one in but we will keep this one as a good spare now i'm not going to go ahead and install the new compressor yet because since it is a new compressor and since i'm putting in mostly new components along with new pag oil and new refrigerant and a new condenser i want to blow those lines out okay that's what the point of the brake clean was so rather than add the new component and then have to take it back apart, I'm gonna go ahead and continue to disassemble the system. So this, what you're looking at right here is your high side line. You see there's a fitting right here. And right in here is a joint that goes over to the condenser on this side. And remember I said most of the wrenches were metric? Well, that's because these aren't. These are standard. This fitting here is three quarters of an inch. And this one here is a seven eighths. I could not find my 7 8 I think one of my kiddos might have made off with it. So I am doing the unpardonable. I'm using an adjustable wrench to go ahead and break this loose. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's good and tight. And we're going to break this sucker loose. So we can continue our journey in getting the condenser out. Came relatively easy. I see that. I'm very thankful for that. Sometimes they don't. And I can't help but have my hand in the way on this one, folks. I'm really sorry. I'm going to try to... Well, there we go. And pull this apart right in here. Y'all see that? There's one of the O-rings you're going to need to replace. You're going to need to find all your O-rings in this system and replace them with new ones. Here is your other fitting that goes to your condenser. Okay, and like I said, it's also another set of sizes, but it's also in standard. So for this size, side, size, for this side, you're gonna need a three quarter and you're gonna need a five eighths, okay? So your three quarter is here, your five eighths is here, all right? Put these together, best way I know how is to show you is to put them together and make a, there you go, make a little, point of pressure with your hand you can squeeze it. it gives you a little bit of leverage to work with to get that nut loose although this one came really easy i promise y'all i did not pre-break these before filming so this is all raw and again just like the other side we're gonna go ahead and pull this off and there is another o-ring be careful with this one i just bent it that actually bent the line because that goes over to that spring lock fitting I showed you earlier. So just be gentle with it. I was a little rough, rougher than I should have been. And here is the O-ring on the other side of the condenser. And you can see when you look closely, they're flattened. So that could have also been a point of leak too. I, I'm, I'm assuming this system has more than one leak. I think the primary leak, something hit my condenser while I was driving down a gravel road, put a hole in it. This clip I showed you earlier is the other end of that line we just took off from the other side of the condenser, okay? So I'm going to attempt to pop this clip off first with a screwdriver. And then we'll just be very careful we don't want to drop this. We, well, we can drop it, but crawl into the truck and find it. Pull this clip out, put it up here for safekeeping. Right, and then you're gonna need the spring lock tool to slide in under here to release an actual spring. There's a ring spring inside this capsule right here. I'll show you what they look like. It's these guys. 
All right, <clears throat> you can get these relatively cheap at Harbor Freight or at your local um, automotive repair shop. And so we're gonna try we're gonna try these and see which one actually fits. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I haven't done a Ford AC system in a minute, but judging by the thickness of the orifice tube. The orifice expansion tube sits down in here. Let me see if this is zoom in. It sits right in here. So we need something that'll slide up under here and pop that spring loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and just randomly select the red one. Never even used this red one before. It's brand spanking new. <clears throat> and the way it works is, see that open gap right there? Right here? This thing will open up. The mouth of it will and you can get it to go around the, the bottom of the tube. So I'm gonna try to do this where you can see it. Y'all have no idea how little room I have in there. See that? Now the tool's on there, but you notice it doesn't really fit it very, very uh, uniformly. So I may have to go one size up, but it slides up in here like this and compresses that spring. Now it might be the next size up, but I compressed that spring. Let's see if I can pull this hose off. I cannot, so I'm gonna need the next size spring lock tool up. So we're gonna pull this red one out. Again, to watch me struggle so you can learn, because that's that's how I learned struggling. We'll try this green one. That's a little better. Kind of goes all the way around the the pipe. You see that? So let's you push it up until you feel it compress the spring inside. Once it's done that, look at that. Pops right out, okay? And I'll show you guys where that spring is in just a moment, but what I want you to see at this point is where your orifice expansion tube is. And yes, it is not an easy to get to spot, but it is inside there. Y'all see that? Man, I can't even get my camera to zoom up close enough. Inside that tube, a little plastic thing was like a tongue of some kind sticking out right there. That is actually, let me show you for reference. That is actually this part right here in the kit. See that? Come on camera. See that right there? That tip is what's looking at you. And all of that is buried down in that pipe, complete with two O-rings, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to dig this one out. And the only thing I know to tell you to do is get a stiff piece of wire, like a coat hanger or a, a pick that's got a hook on one end. And you're gonna to have to hook inside this screen mesh here, puncture hole in and then pull up. Or if you have some really slender forceps, you can reach down in the hole and grab it. But that, that's, that's highly unlikely, so. Y'all remember that tube I told you I was gonna pull out and let you see? It attached right here. I'm gonna go ahead and work this out. Snake it out. And you see how, ooh, there's some oil in that sucker. That's one of the reasons you're gonna to wanna to flush this system with brake clean is because it's full of the old pag oil and contaminants. And you see that right there? The reason you're gonna to wanna to pull this out is there's two O-rings staring you in the face right there, okay? I'm gonna pull this out of the way, and then I'm gonna show you where the spring lock fitting is. See it? Hence the word spring lock. It's a spring that sits down inside that cavity. So when the other end of this pipe makes a full connection and those two O-rings seal up the, the juncture, that spring in there holds the lip of the other pipe in place so these two pipes don't pull apart. Hence spring lock. Woo! Nope, I'm gonna have to clean my driveway. There you go. We got to clean this out. Now, before I wrestle with this orifice tube, I'm going to go ahead and get this line accumulator dryer out of the way so I have more room to work. All right. So there's a couple things you need to remove. Uh, first is you have this, this uh, electrical connection I told you about earlier. Basically, it uh, lets the system know that they've got pl it's got plenty of Freon in it. You can usually just lift up with your finger right here. You see it's covered in dirt, so you know I didn't remove it beforehand. And then you can just wiggle it and pull. Now... I want to add a little freebie here. 
well, this is all free, but anyway, this connection a lot of times is a cause for a compressor to cycle. You'll have a connection right in here that doesn't, that ends up getting chafed or whatever, and it doesn't complete the circuit. And you'll wiggle this wire where my thumb's at, and your compressor will click on and click off and click on and click off. If that happens to you, uh, just get a new pigtail and put on it. You can sometimes go to a salvage yard and find a really good pigtail on a lightly used F-150 or Bronco. You're not going to find many Broncos in the salvage yard probably nowadays. But anyway, we're going to get that out of our way. And then we're going to show you what we do next. So this, again, these are laid over the top. I don't like that. I'm going to reroute those when we come back. But for now, I'm just going to tuck them under here. Get them out of my way. And a lot of times you can just grab this with your hand and twist it loose it's plastic so be careful with it you definitely don't want to over torque this when you go back okay don't over torque it we're going to remove this guy and when we come off of it you're going to notice another o-ring right there okay you see there's a schrader valve inside of it right here and that schrader valve is depressed well, it looks sad but just depressed the schrader valve gets depressed by this little tab inside here and then and it, it can sense the pressure in the system and lets it know it's got plenty of Freon or no, it doesn't have enough Freon in the system. So how about that? Back again with the adjustable wrench for this big nut here. We're gonna loosen this before we take the bolts that hold this thing on in place. It's tight. <clears throat> Woo, that's tight. There we go. Literally move the whole Bronco to get that loose. Now you see why we want to loosen this. We take these bolts that hold it in place off. It's a workout and yet another o-ring y'all see that and this is one of the lines that we're going to flush out and it goes all the way across the firewall over to that little manifold that sits on the back of the compressor now we have a bolt here and a bolt here that hold the accumulator dryer in place that we're gonna to wanna to remove. I'll tell you what those sizes are. Before we take those two bolts out, we're gonna remove the other big bolt, or nut, I should say, here on the other side. Back again with the adjustable wrench. Be careful with this one because it is connected to your evaporator core, it sits in there, so you don't wanna beat this up too badly trying to get it loose. Apply some force. There you go. See, I'm, I'm, I'm fumbling today. There we go. Now you know how much of an imperfect mechanic I am, right? So if you're fumbling, don't feel bad. This shape your mechanic is fumbling too. And you can see this hasn't been off in a while because it is really corroded up. Incidentally, there's a lot of water accumulation on here too while the AC is running during the summer. You hear that? So we're going to come back just to make sure we don't, I don't know, make these threads forever irremovable and put a little bit of lubricant on it. And, ooh. Inside of here, there's gonna be another O-ring right in there. If you guessed those bolts were metric, you would have won. They are eight and 11 millimeter respectively. The top one is eight, the bottom one is 11. And I discovered a handy dandy little ratchet quarter drive and the head of it flips completely around check that out and it's very helpful for getting in tight spots like this when you don't have a whole lot of room to work to get to the head of a bolt so we're gonna start with the easy one we're gonna go ahead and do our eight millimeter And here's what's nifty about that ratchet. You could turn it this way once you got your bolt nice and loose. 
and you can just spin it like a screwdriver. See that? This, this uh, keeper ring here came loose. You wanna carefully remove that, don't lose it. I'm gonna set it up here with our other parts we don't wanna lose. And then this is actually made onto this bracket here. So you can see right there, I can loosen it from around there and now this uh, accumulator dryer can come out. Oh, I dropped my socket. Got my socket back. I won't tell you guys how miserable it was, but I did get it back. It landed it down underneath the engine on the frame. I just told you, didn't I? Well, we're gonna drop it again if we're not careful. There we go. <laughs> oh well, we got the bolt loose. We'll chase that in just a second. Again, this will go in the bolts we do not want to lose. So I'm gonna set that up here. Now this band is loose. We're gonna go to the other side. And I don't know if y'all can see that, but look, all right. Can y'all see that? Right there. There's another one buried right there, my finger. So we're gonna try to get this wrench down in there and get that one loose. Third time's a charm, right? <laughs> well, I hope so. All right, so where were we? Okay, there's that bolt. I'm sorry y'all can't see that very well. But well, we gotta get that one loose. Just know that it sits right above the orifice, the orifice tube, okay? Hands going to completely cover up what I'm doing here, y'all. Well, not quite. I'm contradicting myself. Yeah, in case y'all didn't notice, mechanic is not my regular gig. I, uh, by trade, I actually am a power grid operator who uh, shade trees his own stuff. Just don't want to pay the rate it takes. Uh, mechanics are totally worth it, believe me. But uh, I like to learn how to fix my own stuff because it's just so darn expensive. It's not their fault. It's just the name of the game. And this guy here, I'm going to go ahead and bend this tab out the way. This guy here should just lift straight on out. Give it a little twist. And there's your accumulator dryer. Now you can see both fittings and the bolt holes. We'll get this out of the way. And the reason you want to change this is there's probably particulates in that that are going to have dirt and contaminants that you don't want in your brand new uh you don't want in your brand new compressor all right and now that that's out of the way you can clearly see to work on your orifice tube which sits down in here this is that thing we were trying to get a look at earlier and again you still can't see it but it's in that hole all right so i'm going to go fashion me a coat hanger pull and attempt to get that out of there. So, just in case you're wondering in reference to the vehicle, here's your engine. And with that out of the way, the orifice tube sits inside this aluminum pipe, which incidentally is the other end to this, because these two guys, remember I said the magic? Well, the Freon comes in as a liquid and it evaporates into a gas. Hence the phrase or title of this part here of evaporator core. Somebody who is a full-time mechanic could probably jump on here and correct me and explain it even better. And if you do, I'll be very grateful. Now, I've always fashioned something like this right here. It's just a piece of wire with a tiny hook on the end. But because I'm filming today, it probably won't work. <laughs> but I'll take a tiny piece of wire like this, and the hook's gotta be bent out ever so slightly because you wanna catch in that screen. And I'm gonna slide down beside the orifice tube. You kinda, kinda feel it and you'll twist into the orifice tube and pull. Sometimes you'll get it on the first try. Other times you won't get it at all and it'll frustrate the crap out of you. Pushing down beside the tube, twisting, trying to get a hook on it.
I don't know luck so far. So I'm gonna make the hook a tad bit smaller and go fishing again. I made a tiny little shepherd's crook this time. We'll see what happens. Again, y'all don't benefit from me doing sleight of hand. You need to see me do the process, so we'll see if this works. Well, I caught something that time. I don't know what I'm catching. Hopefully it is the screen on an orifice tube. There we go. Now, again, this is crude, okay? And mechanic probably has a better way of showing you how to do it, but let me get you up close and personal with this thing. You see that? I made that little shepherd's cook. And then uh, shoved it into the hole beside it and pierced that screen and got the shepherd's cook inside the screen of the orifice tube and then pulled. All right? So, hopefully that works for some of you. It's just a simple piece of baling wire. Now, the reason you want to remove it, there you go. Look at all that trash. Now, remember I told you guys I was, the compressor was working. I was going to go ahead and just replace it anyway. Now, you can see why that was probably a good idea. Look at the metal particulates. See the shiny? Sucker has got, it's got metal shavings, metal shavings all in it. So, it's a good thing this thing went ahead and leaked all the Freon out. My compressor was on its way out anyway. So what that means is we're going to want to flush this entire system uh, with brake clean and follow it up with air. But there's, there's how I get the orifice tubes out. It's not pretty. It's not clean in any way, but it works. From outside the hood, you can see both ends of the evaporator core. Okay, You see the small end that I just removed the orifice expansion tube from here. And you see the top end here that bolted into my accumulator dryer. You see that old dirty o-ring is still on there. I'm going to go ahead and remove this dirty o-ring. Get that out of there. Now, something else I forgot to point out is that there's two o-rings on the bottom of the orifice tube that the new orifice tube already has in place. See those? Oh, look at all that metal. Yay, focus. Okay, enough of that. We're going to shoot brake clean into this evaporator core and then we're going to follow it up with air to flush the system out. Now, I don't want to blow all that nasty stuff all over my Bronco, so unfortunately you won't get to see all the gunk come out, but you'll get to see the after effect. I'm going to take my brake clean here and I am going to fill that bottom hole up with brake clean. Get as much of it in there as you can. It's all gonna come out this other end with all the oil and trash. It's inside that evaporator core. I'll show you. We're gonna go ahead and do an air follow. Before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put a rag over this end to catch all the crap, because it's gonna be a lot of crap. You're ready for the big reveal? Look at that. Not as much crap as I was expecting, but there's a lot of oil and residue in there that you want to blow out of your evaporator core before you go back with a fresh system. I'm going to flush this thing a couple times just to make sure she's good and clean. probably blow cleaner, colder cleaner, colder than it did when it come from the factory, maybe. All right, no 
not as much crud this time. So it's getting cleaner. Just for good measure, I'm also going to flush it the other direction. And if somebody knows better than me, obviously, I'd want you to tell me. But we're going to go ahead and shoot the brake clean through the evaporator core this way. And just so y'all can see what's happening here, I'm going to put this blue towel. I realized I covered that last shot up with my arm, so put this blue towel here and see if y'all can see some of the gunk come out. Be looking at that little hose down there at the bottom, okay? I'm gonna shoot air in here, see if gunk comes out that bottom. See all that? That's what we're doing. We're getting that evaporator core nice and clean. Look at that. Look at that junk coming out of there. A lot, of that, a lot of that's just oil, but I can guarantee you there's probably some metal particulates in there too, judging by how much we found on the old orifice tube. Now to remove the front grill is pretty straightforward. You have a series of Phillips head screws across the top, so I'll spray that. They're right there in plain sight. We're gonna remove those. There's four to be precise. And then inside the grill, you have a screw hidden right in here that you need to remove. And when you do that, if you're gentle, you should be able to get this sucker off. You don't want to damage that. That's expensive. To get the condenser out, you first need to loosen up the radiator, slide it back, and you guessed it. This bolt's holding the radiator in. They're 10 millimeter. To remove this little air intake, you just take a screwdriver, pop these little keepers out, make sure you don't lose them. You can just rotate this up and out of your way. Once those top two radiator bolts are out, the radiator will literally just lean back and allow you to access. There's some other bolts back here that are actually holding the condenser in. I'm gonna try to get my camera to zoom in and let you see it. But your first one is right here right there and your second one is right here and so those should be 10 millimeter as well it'll come out eventually there we go at the bottom of the condenser, there are two more bolts holding these brackets on, and I'm going to show you for reference where they can be located. If your bumper has this neat little plastic cutout right here, here, and here, you can access those bolts. And wouldn't you know it, they're not 10 millimeter, they're actually 13 millimeter. So I went ahead and removed the grill uh, so I could kind of show you where everything's at. That you don't have to remove the grill. As you can see how battered and bruised mine is. My uh, condenser is. Oh, you can also take a look and clean out your uh, oil cooler while you're at it if you want. And it should just be a notch you can actually just loosen it and it should slide right out I think and that one well I have to eat my words again folks because that one actually does look like a 10 millimeter let's see yep so just disregard that last thing I said my Bronco apparently has a hodgepodge of bolt sizes
now that those bottom two bolts are loosened, we're gonna attempt to snake this condenser out. I haven't done this before, so y'all might be in for a treat or not. All right, I'm gonna attempt to capture what you have to do to get this thing out. Uh, first of all, at the bottom of the radiator on both ends are some tabs that sit down inside of a, a, um, a little plastic, um, or not a plastic, but a rubber shock mount down at the bottom of the uh, front core support. You'll need to pick the radiator up and slide the bottom of it out. It, it only moves the radiator this way a couple of inches, but when you do that, here's the sequence of getting the condenser out. You lift up ever so gently, and then you rotate the driver's side of the condenser up. Like that, okay? Driver's side up, and then out. The reason I was having so much trouble, and you will too, is because of this pipe right here, okay? See that? It comes out at an angle, and it's, I don't know, two inches of extra pipe right there. That's what was holding me up, trying to get it from, from in here, so. There we go. Now, I don't see any oil on this thing, so it's very possible this was fine. I, I don't know, but I'm not gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna hang on to it, because it's always good to keep a spare part, especially if there's nothing wrong with it. Now that the condenser's out, you can sort of inspect your radiator. And so I can see I have one mud dauber nest there I need to get rid of, but otherwise this sucker's pretty darn clean. So what I'm gonna do now, get rid of this. And then uh, you can also look down there and see those mounting bolts right there. There's no one right there. And that's what the bottom tangs on this uh, condenser slide into. Oh, it's a thing of beauty, y'all. I get to see it unboxed. I literally didn't take it out before I started filming. That way y'all could see it. La! <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. All right, so let's go over really quick what you're going to have to swap out, okay? So here's the new one. And here's the old one. So you can see really quickly, there's not a whole heck of a lot you gotta swap, but you do need to grab that grommet and that grommet as they fit right here and right here. The bottom just slides in behind the washers on those bolts. And then uh, you've got brand new fittings here that are capped so that you know it didn't get any junk in your new condenser. And oh, look at that. This one actually isn't capped, but it came with an O-ring. How about that? Well, I can't wait to put this in. All right, in with the new one. We've got these grommets swapped out. Let's just see how hard it is to get this one in. I think, I'm gonna pick up this end right here. Just, yep, there you go, one more tip. I had to pick up the other radiator, the end of the other radiator there to get it to go in. Now, it's in place. So much trouble I gotta go through to get the, um, the bottom tabs on. I think I'm gonna have to go ahead and remove that. Let's do that. Yep. 
I actually didn't have to come all the way out with it part of the way. Get that bolt restabbed. Remember, don't tighten it down all the way because you still got to do the other side. Got to get the other side in first. So let's go ahead and get this other side in. Let's see how much trouble it is. There we go. Much better this time. I'm gonna say this, uh, before you tighten those bottom bolts up, make sure you go ahead and start these top two. And the reason is, is if you were to tighten those bottom ones up, you get up here and stuff wouldn't line up. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get these started. Okay, now that I've got all four bolts tightened down, I, I figured I'd spare you all that because you know how to tighten bolts. I'm gonna put the radiator back in and I, I'm gonna try to get you a better shot at what I did here, okay? So there's like <clears throat> a couple of grooves down here in the bottom that the radiator sits in. So I'm physically going to, oh, and before you do that, don't forget this piece right here probably will have fallen down and it goes right here. As soon as you pull that radiator forward and you reach under there to mess with that condenser, this piece will most likely fall. And so, does just put it back and then you're going to pick the radiator up be very careful because it's still hooked up okay I'm going to make sure that it's in the left side over here and pick it up again slide it in on the right side over here and then wiggle it till it fits and then you may have to adjust it back to the right or to the left depending on how far you moved it in my case I moved mine a few inches that direction. That rubber ga the rubber grommet at the bottom that holds it in place doesn't like to give. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick it back up. I'm gonna try something here. If you got an old piece of rubber, which by the way, I did use that, this, I did use liquid wrench on these old rubbers here because the ones that were holding the condenser in because they were very much stubborn, didn't wanna go. So I'm gonna shoot that one down there with some liquid ranch. Now let's see if it'll go. Take our little flat blade, try to guide it in. There we go. Again, like I said before, you just gotta be patient with it. <laughs> Whole idea is to go back with the Bronco in better shape than when you tore it apart. Am I right? Don't worry, I put a little lubricant on those threads. One last little quick check I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and slide this back into place here. I'm also gonna spin my fan. Of course, my belt's in the way, but my fan spins freely still, so I know that uh, we got that sucker lined back up with the cowling.
Now we want to flush these lines before we reinstall our compressor. I'm going to fill the sucker up with some brake clean. And we'll follow it with some air. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. Well, <laughs> that was a whole lot. Same thing with the other side. Remember I showed you that other end right here? We're incidentally gonna need to get that O-ring out of there, that old O-ring. We got that O-ring out of there. We're gonna fill this up with some brake fluid. There you go, and see it? follow it with air and we'll have some nice clean AC lines to go with our nice clean new parts. Now we've got our lines flushed and we've got them cleaned out and dried. Let's talk about oil. You're going to need eight ounces of PAG 46 and according to the specs I've read, you're going to need between 34 and 38 ounces of uh, refrigerant, 134A. Uh, so this PAG 46 hole is going to go in your compressor, but we want to take a little bit like a cap full out so we can lubricate all of our O-rings. When we go back together, we're going to get all new O-rings so you can see our orifice tube here has new O-rings. And we're going to put just a dab of oil on every O-ring before we reassemble. Again, we're back at the high side. <clears throat> I've got this all good and cleaned out. We're gonna go ahead and take this plastic cap off of here. Off of the new condenser. And if you pull this nut back right here, you'll notice that it's already got a brand new O-ring on there, okay? So we're gonna put a little bit, not a whole lot. But we're gonna open up this pack hole, put a little bit. Open a tiny little hole. We're gonna put a tiny bit of this oil on all of our O-rings. Just want a nice clean, clean fit, nice tight fit. There you go. Now that that's lubricated, you have to give this a few twists as you go. It's a very tight fit, metal to metal there. Kind of push this in and you're gonna watch that o-ring we got a storm coming see that o-ring fit up nice and tight against that right there and then we're going to go ahead and start this nut here another thing you don't want to do is you don't want to cut those rubber o-rings and so i use the oil to help them slide in place this is the side that has a three quarter and the seven eighths which i still cannot find
and here we are not going for lug nut tight here okay just a good snug fit here's our orifice tube this is the end that you want to put down okay but i'm going to go ahead and for just for demonstration purposes i'm going to go ahead and lubricate these o-rings my hands are clean they're brake clean they're just really stained <laughs> this will help sliding it down in the uh, the pipe as well there you go here we are we're going to go ahead and put it in with the white side down just kind of rotate it around as we push it in And we can very gently follow up with a short extension to make sure it seats. Y'all remember this tube here? Well, it has to be flushed as well. We're going to go ahead and flush it out with brake clean while we have it off. Till it runs clean. Incidentally, it also has two O rings down here on the other end that we've got to replace. Go ahead and follow up with some air. Make sure we don't lose our spring lock fitting. You see that thing try to blow out on me? And then we're going to replace these two O rings. There is a very easy, painless way to get these off, by the way, I forgot to mention. Go get you one of these little shepherd's crook tools like this. It's got a hook on one end. You can just reach under the O-ring and you pull. Same thing here, reach under the O-ring, hook it, and pull. Now we're ready to install some new ones. Got the new ones on, got them lubricated up. Well, spring lock fittings are a pain in the butt on the disassembly, they are a cinch on the reassembly. Literally, that is all you do. That is a seal. Of course, don't forget to reinstall your clip when you're done. And here is the other end of our brand new condenser. And you can see it already has no ring on it. I went ahead and took the liberty of putting the lubricant on it, lubricant on it. We're gonna make sure it's nice and square. It's a very flexible piece of aluminum pipe right there. So I'm gonna make sure it's good and square before I even try to tighten it down. I don't want a cross thread and I don't wanna have an air uh, freon leak right there either. So we're gonna get it down hand tight. And this is the one where you gotta come back with five eighths, I believe, let's see. Yeah, that's a five eighths. And the other side is our three quarter. We go ahead and get that nice and snug. Again, I started it by hand and I ensured that aluminum pipe was squared up before I went to work on it. Now this one, you're gonna to wanna to be even more gentle than the other side because there's a joint right here that you don't wanna bend coming off that new condenser. Nope, oh, that is too big. Let's try another one. There we go. Now we're ready for our new line dryer. Look at that. And there's where we're gonna put our Freon in right there. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these caps. It comes capped off to protect it from the elements. This end actually has a plug in it. I'll definitely make sure you remove that plug. You'll have all kinds of problems and you won't know why.
Remember to start everything by hand. Life goes so much easier when you do. And now we can tighten it down with wrenches. Don't forget your pressure sensor. That goes right here. And you can see they already provided us with a brand new O-ring in there. The inside of this is already pretty oily. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this. Remember, we don't have to tighten this too, very, too tight because well, it is plastic. Just a little bit. And then we can go ahead and so I rerouted that hot water heater line underneath so it's not resting on it constantly. And we'll go ahead and hook our harness back up. And we are done here until it's time to put Freon in. Let's talk about this new compressor. It should come complete with a brand new clutch. And the back of it will be plugged with a plastic plug. All right. So we're going to want to remove that 10 millimeter bolt right there. You hear that little hiss? Add some pressure on it. you're gonna see two brand new O-rings right there. You see that? So it already came from the factory with two new O-rings. And you can also notice that they're already lubricated. You see that? All right, now, this compressor is where we're going to put our uh, oil, all right? So we're gonna fill this sucker up with brand new PAG 46. Remember I told you there's a high and a low side. If you look at this compressor, one of these holes is bigger than the other one. That's your low side, that's your high side. We're gonna put our PAG oil in the low side. Once that fills up, you can rotate it around and pull that, pull that oil in. That way you can get the other. Well, heck, I'll show you on camera. Why not? Hear that? There we go. Now, to be totally honest with you guys, I wasn't able to get all the oil into the compressor. So what I did is I went ahead and lifted the low side line up. Uh, I elevated it and dumped some of the oil, what's left in that side, and uh, let it run down in the line on the low side. So now... We're gonna go ahead and get the compressor in. And in order to not lose my oil, I need to keep it pretty vertical. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it down in here like this. My camera decided to click off right at the moment I was gonna show you all this. So what I ended up doing was turning these hoses flat and then starting this bolt by hand, always start by hand, and then tightening this bolt down on the back here. Sorry, you didn't get to see that, but uh, I don't want to take it back apart with the risk of losing oil. That's the, that's the easiest way I know of after filling this compressor with oil to get these lines back on the back side. And then we can just rotate it down and into position. Go get our bolts. I don't know if I said this earlier in the video, but always start your bolts by hand. I probably said that so many times, you're like, stop saying it. I really can't stress it enough. Start your bolts by hand. Save you so much heartache in the long run. 
Thanks, Dad, for that uh, really good piece of life advice. Also, the fact that you're bolting into aluminum makes it even more important that you start by hand. After tightening those bolts down, I went ahead and put the belt on. And the reason I did is I wanted to get a look at how well it lined up in a clutch, you know, because, and I'll tell you why, we have a wiring issue. And I want to make make sure you're, you know, you're clear on that is while this sensor plugged in fine, my clutch wire isn't long enough. All right, so just be aware. I literally don't have any slack left in it. Just be aware that with these new kits, this was orient oriented more this way, so I had enough room. But since it's rotated down, uh, this is not gonna fit, so I'm gonna have to splice in uh, some wire here to lengthen that. I didn't get the uh, closed AC system button down a moment too soon. The storm just hit, so I'm gonna spend that time in here uh, connecting up some extension wires for that pigtail. Well, it is still raining and thundered, but it let up enough for me to go ahead and make a wire extension here. I made that in my garage and I've got some uh, heat shrink on this joint. I've got heat shrink on this joint and then I've got electrical tape. So uh, it's not pretty, but it does the job. And you can see now we can go ahead and plug in our compressor and uh, keep this from unnecessarily vibrating too much and, and coming apart. I'm probably gonna stick a zip tie around there just to kind of hold everything in place so that wire don't sit there and vibrate and potentially come undone but with that being said folks we are ready to install our line here for our intake and then we're ready to vacuum this sucker down and see if it'll hold a vacuum all right let's see if get this back on come on come on all right there's one in get off there dirt I'm telling you that thunder it just don't want to let up does it all right here we go all right on that vacuum pump that you buy from harbor freight it does not come with the air fitting on the back so you'll need to install one of those focus and then on the front it has fittings for both R12 and 134. That's R12 is a smaller one. 134 is the bigger one. Go ahead and cap your R12 so it doesn't pull suction there. You just want it to pull suction from the 134. Now let's talk about this brand new manifold set. I love new tools. All right. I'm going to try to open this single handedly. Oh, look at that. So pretty. Let's open this up. La la. <laughs> I don't have any fancy angel music for that, but I can show y'all. There we go. Harbor Freight, Pittsburgh. Low side, low side valve connector, high side, high side gauge, and lines. Let's put this together. I'm gonna spare you all the gauge details, but I'll show you that I've got everything connected up. I've got my blue to blue, everything's color coded. And then the yellow's gonna go over here to the vacuum pump, just like that. But if you're curious, Harbor Freight, Pittsburgh, look at this. They have a color-coded step-by-step -step diagnostic recovery evacuation. Of course, you're not supposed to do that unless you're a licensed mechanic. So I'm not gonna tell you that. Charging, and there, there's the complete setup. Isn't that cool? Anyway, you get the, you get the little uh, handy-dandy cards to tell you how to do it. So let's go ahead and connect this up and let's go ahead and pull a vacuum. I'll show you the basic hookup. Your blue goes over here to your accumulator dryer. There's your gauges, got a nifty little hook up there. And here's your high side. And then of course your yellow hose goes to your uh, vacuum pump. So here's our air chuck. 
and I've never used this before, this particular top. I've always used the electric one, so it's gonna be interesting to see how this works. So it's really noisy, so I'm gonna step back here and show you, but this is the noise it makes when it starts to pull a vacuum. Now I've got my gauges closed, so we're gonna go ahead and pull a vacuum. We're gonna open the low side. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, full disclosure on that air pump, the most it would pull is 24 PSI-ish, 24, 25 PSI. It would not pull any harder than that. So if you're wanting to get the full 30, that's not the pump for you. However, I have had my timer going here for about 10 minutes. It has not budged from about 25 negative PSI. So we're gonna come back and we're gonna check it again. All right, we've held our suction, although it was only about 24, 25. And so now we're ready to go ahead and uh, start putting Freon in. I've changed out the end to this right here. And we're gonna go ahead and have this valve all the way open. We're gonna screw on our first can of Freon and then we're gonna open our low side, start charging it up. You're gonna to wanna to start your vehicle and uh, turn your AC on to max cool. up good. Go ahead and launch that can. In this case these have valves on them. We'll close this down all the way. And then we're going to go ahead and open on the low side and let it start put, pulling that Freon in. You'll hear it. The can's going to get pulled too. It's already getting ice cold on the outside. It's also getting lighter. A little ways into the process, you'll start to hear your compressor kick on once you get a little Freon in. I'll get the camera over there so you can see it. Okay, see that? You'll also notice your little sight glass going crazy here on your manifold. Y'all see that? That is Freon entering the system. The cycling of the compressor will also get more rapid. While this is pulling it in, this Freon is 12 ounces a can. It's three cans, it's 36 ounces. Different things, different manuals say different things. I've seen it say 32 ounces, I've seen it say 38 ounces. So. We'll just go by what the gauges say once we have these three cans in. So look at how frosty this can, valve, and hose is. Ooh. You can also hear my compressor cycling more frequently. Can number one is almost in. While the sight glass is a pretty good indicator that you're out of Freon in a can of Freon, you can also tap the, the bottle and hear a different sound. Listen to this. Okay, there's an empty can. Here's a full can. For the difference. Once you've emptied the can, you want to go ahead and cycle this valve on top all the way back out. All right. We're going to close our low side. I don't think you actually have to do that, but I'm, I'm going to do it for safety reasons. Yeah, and there's, there's nothing left. It's empty. We're going to go ahead and thread on our brand new can. This is going to make 24 ounces in the system. I'm going to go ahead and close this valve back in on the fresh can of Freon. And open our valve. 
around the time can number two is in, the compressor will continually be on. It will not cycle off again. And you'll see our gauge is starting to get close to the values we're looking for. This is a really good sign right here. Take a look at that. Woo! That's cold. I neglected to get footage of the final pressure readings, so here's an image of what your needles should be registering high and low side. Y'all, there is nothing like getting in a broad and having have a nice cold air by these vents. Totally worth all the sweat and tears. And a little bit of blood too. <laughs> all right, y'all let me know. What do you think about that? Would you like to see more repair videos like that? Because if you do, I've got another big repair coming up on this Bronco soon. Thank y'all so much for subscribing to Grubbing Gas. I appreciate every single one of you. Tell a friend about us. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell so you know when we upload new content. And uh, we're doing a big series of dad jokes too, 365 days of dad jokes. So uh, if you don't like repairs, just stick around for some dad jokes. Y'all have a blessed day.